Yo, what's going on, everybody? This is Don't Talk Sports. My name is Dylan. In today's video, what we're going to do is we're going to be breaking down Ohio State's game against Indiana. As I was watching the game, I was writing down notes of everything we're going to discuss for today's video. I'm going to go ahead and say it off the rip. That game was not what I was expecting. But before we go any further, if you're going to enjoy, drop a like. And without further ado, let's get into it. Now we're going to go ahead and start off with the very first one that I think a lot of people have kind of overlooked and it is the fact of, is Indiana's defense just really good? And the reason why I say that is because during the broadcast, uh, the two commentators, Brad Nessler and Garrett Donaldson, whatever his name is, pardon me, uh, they said that this Indiana defense has, I believe, six transfers starting on that defense. Some of them from Alabama and even Georgia. And one of them, I can't remember the name off the top of my head, but I believe it was number was 44. He was flying all around that defense, and he was shutting down the run very efficiently. Now, do I think Indiana's defense is going to be very improved this year? Yes. That's why I think that was kind of part of the play of why Ohio State was struggling a lot on the offensive side of the ball. But I don't think that was entirely the whole reason why Ohio State was struggling. Next up, let's move on to Ohio State's defense side of the ball. They played, arguably, I would say an A game. Could have been an A-plus game if they wouldn't score points, because obviously when Ohio State's playing bad teams, you're supposed to shut them out. But like I said, the defense, they played phenomenal. They did everything right. The only problem they ever had was I believe they had a penalty which allowed Indiana to get a first down. They moved down the field, got a field goal. It's whatever. But other than that, there was a lot of people coming into the season saying, is the defense, now they've had a whole other offseason to pretty much be in this defense, keep learning, developing. How are they going to look? Are they going to remember all the cues? They looked like they knew what they were doing. There was times where you saw them all hollering out, yelling. It looked like, wait, are they confused? Do they not know what they're doing? No, they're making sure each other are in their right assignments, and they executed the run defense was really good. The pass defense was really good. The run defense, on I would say, was actually probably just good. It wasn't really good. My question for Indiana is, did they hire, like, navies or armies or whoever uh, offensive coordinator? Because they were running a lot of triple options. Like, the amount of times where it was, like, handoff, keep, pitch, or quick slant. Like, that was all their offense. And the part that's kind of haunting me is... Michigan, they can run a little bit of that triple option at times because they like to run the ball, obviously. And if we can't figure out how to stop that, we're in some deep shit when that last game of the season comes around. Now, this next part could be taken in two ways. When it comes to the offensive line and how they went with passing uh, downs and rundowns, because it seemed like they were struggling quite a bit when it came to the run blocking. And I get it. This offensive line is brand new. I think the high state would have two or three players drafted last year. So they're going to be struggling. They had, what, Dewan Jones? Uh, Luke Weipler, and then one other guy, I forget his name, they all got drafted, and I believe they also had a deaf guy also go into the draft. I don't know if he got drafted, though. But besides that, this offensive line is all brand new-ish, as you would say. And I believe off the very first play of the game, the very first play of the game, they went out there whenever they had the, the off, uh, offense on the field. It was like a little stretch handoff with Trayvon Henderson, and it looked like the tackle and the guard both were blocking one guy when, in reality, what they were supposed to do is one of them takes that guy almost like quickly just shoves him off the guard maybe was supposed to like pull around and then go up you had two guys coming you let that edge guy go push him off the guards pulling up to take the first guy the running backs coming and he's going to get behind the tackle the tackle supposed to take the linebacker and then you can get maybe five or ten yards right there instead it turned into a negative three yard loss and there was other times in the game where it looked like they had good run uh hole, running holes set up for the running backs it's just that number 44 for Indiana was just shooting the gaps like it was nothing. And we were losing yards every single time. But there was some times where the running game did actually work a little well. We got two running uh, touchdowns. That's the only way we were score touchdowns. So when it comes to how we run the ball, it looks like we do know what we're doing a little bit. The offensive line just needs to be fixed up quite a bit. Next up, I want to discuss Ryan Day. Ryan Day, where the fuck did the Ryan Day go from last year in the college football playoff when we were playing Georgia? And he was jumping up and down. He was having fun. He was getting into the game. That Ryan Day was the Ryan Day we actually started to like at the end of the season. This Ryan Day, that play calling was not making sense. Now, I do have to ask, and I haven't looked to see if this is true or not, Brian Hartline was named the offensive coordinator going into the season. Was he calling plays? Because if he was, and that's the play calling we're seeing, it no, you need to go back to just being the regular wide receiver coach. And the reason why I say that is because we came into the season saying, okay, he's the offensive coordinator. He's also the wide receiver coach. We have all these talented wide receivers. Why were we just running the ball almost the entire game? And I'm not going to really talk about his name that much, but Devin Brown, the other quarterback for Ohio State, they said he was going to get some good game reps during this game as well. 
he only came in for, I want to say, maybe max, maybe seven or eight downs. And all he was doing was handing the ball off. And at the very end of the game, whenever the game was pretty much garbage time, they brought him in for three downs. Pass plays. First play. Throw the ball. Receiver dropped it. Second play. Throw the ball. Receiver dropped it. Third play. Throw the ball. Was nowhere near his receiver. The thing that I'm like scratching my head is, all offseason, all we were hearing was, Man, this quarterback battle is neck and neck. Man, we don't know who's going to do it. Every single time, these guys are like showing flashes. Where the hell were the flashes? And it's like all last season and the year before, all these great receivers, Garrett Wilson, Chris Olave, Jackson Smith and Jigba, now Marvin Harrison, Emeka Abuka, Julian Fleming, all these guys on the roster. And our leading receiver was our tight end? It just it, it just don't make sense to me. Could have just been, like I said, NES defense being so damn good with covering our receivers that we couldn't get open. Yeah, but I thought this was wide receiver you. I thought we were supposed to be recruiting all these five-star receivers and we were supposed to develop them into NFL talent. Uh, Marvin Harrison, hey, if you want to be a top five, top three, top two overall pick in the draft next year, you might want to step it up, dude, because you weren't getting open yesterday. Now, the last piece that I have not named, Kyle McCord. Kyle, buddy. As the game was going on, I wanted to tear you a new one. But while the game was going on, I was going on Twitter. I was looking and I was seeing all these different people saying, don't kill the guy yet. Don't hurt him yet. But as the game got towards the end, he was still struggling. It was like some people were turning. Some people were still behind him. I'm still going to stay behind you, Kyle. Trust me. As that game was going on, and I'm sure there's a lot of people, we wanted to tear him a new one because he was not playing that good as what we were hoping. Surprisingly enough, as the game went on, you would notice he actually didn't play that bad i would say he just didn't play up to what we have seen in the past with like justin fields and cj stroud i think we need to realize we're not gonna get that elite elite quarterback three years in a row i don't think now could i be wrong kyle can develop into that yeah but i hope so i can make a video kind of breaking down the film from the game if you guys want to let me know in the comments but it just seemed like with all his throws he didn't really know where to go at times or if he did it seemed like with that offensive line, he just didn't really have the time to really set the throws up and then get the ball where it needed to be. And then like going back to last year, and this also has to do with Indiana's defense, it seemed like last year with CJ Stroud, he at times was just forcing the ball to Marvin Harrison, and Marvin Harrison was just going up and getting the ball. With now, Kyle McCord, last time I checked, he was the high school quarterback with Marvin Harrison back in Philly for three years, won state titles. Aren't you two, you two supposed to have like a connection? Why weren't you just forcing the ball to Marvin and just seeing, let him go up and get the ball? Next week, Ohio State goes on to play uh, a Youngstown State. Probably going to be a, a blowout as well, but they are at home. Hopefully, Kyle can go out there, settle in, because in the Indiana game, he had one interception, no touchdowns. I'm hoping in this game, he can go out there and possibly put up maybe two or three touchdowns, keep the interceptions at zero, and just kind of just let the game come to you. Overall, if I had to give this game like a, a rating of how I think it went, I'm going to give it probably like a C plus, B minus at most. It wasn't the game that we were expecting, but for a first time uh, offensive line brand new, first time quarterback, they didn't play awful. They just didn't play up to par what we were expecting. And I think the reason why is because we're looking at all the other teams that are around the league that are around college that are competing for a national championship, the Georgias, the Alabamas, they're blowing teams out of the water. But other than that, that's all I got to discuss for today's video. As always, everything that I'm saying here is my opinion. So if you have a different opinion on it, leave a comment down below. So if you want to debate it, talk about it, chop it up, anything you disagree with or agree with, let me know in the comment section what you what you think about the game. If you wanted to enjoy today's video, as always, make sure you drop a like. As always, appreciate if you do so to let me know you're enjoying today's videos. And also, if you're maybe a fan of the channel and you want to go ahead and subscribe, you're a fan of the content that I'm posting here, you can go ahead and hit that subscribe button. It's somewhere on screen. It's free. It costs nothing. And make sure you hit that notification bell so you're notified the second I post. But without further ado, this has been Don't Talk Sports. Have a great rest of your day. Peace.